guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in January from worst to best. I tried a total of 11 eyeshadow palettes, most of which I have dedicated reviews on or they might be placed into some videos. But yeah, I'm a big eyeshadow palette freak, eyeshadow palette collector, all that good stuff. So if you want some good eyeshadow palette talk, then just keep watching. Okay, I do need to make an apology before I get into this. Um, some of these eyeshadow palettes I haven't tried very much of. Most of the time I like to film this video in the middle of the next month so that the palettes that I tried towards the end of the month can get a little bit more use. But since I'm moving this month, I'm trying to pre-film as much as I can. So unfortunately, I just don't have time to test the palettes thoroughly. So the ones that I haven't tested thoroughly, I will let you know. But let's start off with number 11, the worst palette that I tried this month which is the Essence I Like to Mob It, Mob It palette. I've only used this one once, but I definitely only need to use this once to know my thoughts. It's only six shades. Uh, but I was excited about this because this is super dirt cheap, you guys. It's like four bucks, and I heard good things about it, and I was disappointed. I did a video, I believe it was called like Testing Overhyped Makeup. This is definitely overhyped. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, the shimmers here are kind of pathetic if I'm being honest and the mattes are like okay. I honestly think if you want this color story you don't want to spend a lot of money this is a good palette to pick up but if you're looking for a quality palette in these colors then no. This is like a I need like a purpley look for one occasion so let me pick this up kind of palette. This would be good for that but yeah um, in terms of like everyday use it really isn't that easy to use. I did really like the look I created. I love the tones here. I think it actually is a unique palette and the looks you get are beautiful, but the quality here is difficult to work with. The shimmers give me absolutely nothing. You definitely are going to at least need to wet your brush. Yeah, I just, I thought it was going to be really good. I mean, I know it's only $4, but people were hyping these up and I think e.l.f. and BH do it way better. So I heard there's inconsistencies within the color stories. So I have another green palette to try to see if it's better still. I'm sorry I never got to it this month. I meant to try this month and I didn't. But yeah, this one let a girl down. Okay, number 10. I tried a ton of Dior quads or quince. They were quince this month and um, they were all pretty bad. So let's start off with number 10. I was really sad about these because this is like the good formula from Dior. You know, Dior has a good formula. This is Organza, but it something just wasn't matching up. These have the same finish as the luxury permanent line that I really love, but you can see like this is getting hard panned right here. This color Organza honestly is kind of an ugly color story. <laughs> I don't really like the color story. There is not enough depth in here. I feel like all four of these shades are the same level of depth, so that means they're kind of pointless in this palette. A look on the eye is all about different depths and tones, and with them being in the same depth, it really is hard to get the most out of this palette. Anyways, it's like a $65 palette. The color story is kind of ugly. The choices of color in here don't make much sense to me, so I didn't like it. Number nine, we have a Dior Trio. So I tried two quints and two trios, excuse me, but this is the Mineral Rose Trio. Honestly, like, I don't hate this. I actually think it's really pretty. I just think it's extremely overpriced. Uh, this will look pretty on the lid, but the only look that you can get with this palette is a monochromatic look and a very simple one at that. These are much better quality than the Trio Bleaks that they launched last year, which I absolutely hated. Definitely a step up, but also extremely boring and overpriced. I almost like this better as a cheek palette than I do on the eyes. So when I wear this, I will put it all over the eyes and then I will also use these shades on the cheeks as well. And the look is really pretty. So that is why I actually do like this. I bought it. I'm laying in my grave, okay, <laughs> because that's how I'm going to have to use it since it's mine now. But I wouldn't buy it again, you know? I will make use of what I have with it since I have it, but it's not a recommendation. 
Okay, Dior, hi, welcome. Welcome to 8th place as well. Yeah, see, they're all towards the bottom. So this is the one that launched with Organza. This is Popoline or po Popeline, whatever. <laughs> it's this one. So this one, I have similar feelings to as the Organza. It's just that the color story happens to be prettier. And we also have a little bit more pop of depth here with this one, but I just wish this was like a matte brown. I think that would have changed the whole trajectory of this palette. But again, similar feelings. There's something about the formula that's still not as good as the permanent luxury line shadows. I don't love it, but I actually don't like dislike this one. This one is really, really pretty. But again, it's that situation where I'm okay with it now that I have it and the money's been spent and I've accepted that, but it's not a quint that I would really recommend for you unless you really like a pink look that doesn't have depth. And there is a time and a place for that. I'm not knocking that. It's just I have so many pinks in my collection that I wouldn't purchase this again, so. Number seven is from the ColourPop Valentine's Day collection. This is the Secret Admirer palette. Now this one is only $14. So I mean, if you want a pink palette, this is not a bad direction to go. It's pretty traditional ColourPop formula where the mattes are a little bit overly powdery, but they're still pretty good. The shimmers are pretty nice as well. I know In The Mood is a little bit chunky here, uh, but my biggest gripe with ColourPop shadows is a lot of the times they don't tend to look in the pan how they do in the eye. This palette pulls lighter and more pink. So if you get this palette, it's gonna be a pink look, though I'm just, I would expect if you bought this, you were expecting a pink look, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a decent palette. I'm not so into these tones of pinks, so that's why it's ranking where it's ranking. It's it's too pink for me, but I liked it. I actually had a really good experience. This is where things are gonna take a turn <laughs> in the rankings. I really do like this. It's just too pink for my preferences, so after Valentine's Day, I'm not going to reach for this, but if you are looking to gift somebody a Valentine's Day themed present, this would be a good idea, or you just really want to get into the occasion and wear pink eye shadow up until Valentine's Day using a Valentine's Day palette, then I do like this. I don't think this is a bad palette from ColourPop, it's just not one that stands out to me. Moving on to number six, this is the last Dior palette I'm going to mention today. I promise this is the Coral Glow Trio Bleak, so it is a trio. So this is the same as the Rose Glow, except it's coral, but I actually quite like this one. Again, it's overpriced for what it is, but I do enjoy the coral glow that this gives my face. So this is one that I'm actually more inclined to reach for. It works beautifully both on the cheeks and the eyes. I honestly prefer this as a cheek palette than I do just an eye palette, but I don't normally like these colors on my cheeks or eyes, which is why I actually like this palette because it's something that's a little bit more unique to me. I know it's not unique, but it's unique to me. Uh, but the shades are a bit sheer. It's not an amazing, amazing formula, but the overall look that I get with it, I actually really, really love. So that's why I'm ranking this one here. Number five is the Natasha Denona Mini Crush Palette. My feelings about this are the same as the ColourPop. It's just not my color story. I think the quality in here is really nice. A big disappointment for me personally as a Natasha Denona collector is that I own all five shades in here already. I'm not that mad at it though. Don't get me wrong. This is a Valentine's Day launch. It's a cash grab. Let's be honest here. And <laughs> that's what Natasha Denona did. If you want a pink eyeshadow palette, I think you will like this. Honestly though, like I like this better than the ColourPop palette. The quality is better. This shade Daisy right here, game changer. Absolutely love this shade. I will admit though you can see again a little hard pants. I like this better, but not that this is that much more expensive. This is $25, but if you're looking still to like save 10 bucks, you can get similar looks with the ColourPop. Not exactly, but you do get a few more shades. I still like the Natasha Denona Mini Crush better, but I have all these shades. I don't really want anything pink anymore, especially like these tones of pinks, but yeah. So number four, this is one that I feel like could either travel up or travel down. This is one of the palettes that I feel I still want to play with more. I just 
haven't had the opportunity yet but this is from Nomad Cosmetics this is the Whistler Snow Lodge palette first of all color story 10 out of 10 like this would rank number one in terms of color story I just think the curation is absolutely genius I have a history with Nomad <laughs> I don't like their quality of eyeshadows in the past I have stayed away from the brand because what I have tried I just I wasn't moved by but what always kept my eye on the brand was I loved the whole theming and marketing that they did you know they travel across the world and they create palettes based on where they travel and they do a phenomenal job with the palette itself when it comes to the packaging and the color stories love their color stories they're always curated so beautifully but I've never been in love with the formula Nomad did reach out to me they asked if they could send me their new launches I think they might have improved the formula this isn't an amazing formula but it's definitely solid like I felt like I had to build up the mats a little bit but once I got there I got there and I was happy and a couple of the shimmers that I used I was like eh, about like I would wet a brush but this isn't a majorly expensive palette so I'm not that mad at it so I'm not in love with this formulation but if it's a good formulation and I think what makes this palette stand out is that this color story is just so unique there's even a duochrome in here I've only played with the blues and blues are also more difficult to work with so I I want to play with like this side of the palette right here before I can give my final thoughts. So right now it's sitting at number four because I, I love the color story and I didn't have problems with the shadows at all. So we're still working on this one, but I'm I'm pleased with this one. Pleasantly surprised because the other palettes I have, I just didn't like at all. Like this one, I'm like, okay, I can definitely work with this one for sure. And you know, color story. I'm all about the color story with this one. Number three is the Pat McGrath Labs X Bridgerton palette. I've had a lot of fun with this palette this month. I've used it a lot. I've talked about this collection a ton on my channel this month ever since it launched. Quality in here? Love it. My only gripe with this is I feel like every single look that I do is the same just because of the choices of the colors. I mean, if you've watched my previous videos, you know these are not the colors that I probably would have chosen for this collection, but they're pretty nonetheless. I've liked the looks that I've created. You just have to like these colors in order to like this palette. Be aware, you're probably going to use one of the pinks as the base shades, and you're probably going to use the blue all over the lid, therefore making almost all of your looks look the same. There's not much versatility in this six pan here, but I've still had fun with it. I still really like it. I think it's a nice palette from Pat McGrath. It's definitely not my favorite. Leads to pink. Gosh, so many dang pinks. But other than that, I've enjoyed everything about it. I've enjoyed all the looks that I've done. I like it. So that's that. One and two are totally boring. If you watched my monthly favorites, you already know what they are. I guess I've been boring this month. I, I've been wanting to wear bolder lips. Like this is K-Romance from Charlotte Tilbury. So I've been reaching for palettes like these. So number two is the Chanel Quad in Mediterranean. Now this was limited edition. Okay, it's so boring. I almost don't recommend it to you guys because it's so boring. But this really does have a refined finish that I don't have in any of my other Chanel quads. And I know you guys are calling me out. You just like it because it's Chanel. Like, yes, I'm a luxury makeup channel. I like the luxury experience. This really does feel like a luxury experience to me. But these eyeshadows do check out. If you like neutral, subtly glimmery palettes, if you tend to enjoy like a Charlotte Tilbury Tom Ford more subtle palette because you enjoy that finish it gives to the eyelid then I think you will like this. I have tried a couple of Chanel palettes that I haven't liked. This one is by far my favorite because I think the finish in here is a little bit more oomph to me. You know it still is that sophisticated finish very elegant but there's little glimmers in here that make it that much more special but I've enjoyed how easy this palette is to use. What a thoughtless look you can create. Just slap one of the shadows on and go. This palette is really great for work. If you just want to pop on a really easy neutral palette, you will enjoy this a lot. So this isn't about intricacy in a look at all. It's about washes of color. So I've been enjoying the elegance in that and the lack of depth that you need to get a pretty look like that. That's just eye awakening. Like I'm wearing this quad right now. How boring is my look? But it's perfect for the bold lip and it looks really pretty elegant easy going that no makeup makeup style look that's really popular right now this is great for that 
I've been liking this style of makeup a lot, so I've been liking that. But I don't recommend it for everybody. I think it is, it's overpriced, let's be honest here. But I've been, I like it. I enjoy it, okay? <laughs> okay, number one. Here's the part where, like, I feel crazy because I used this palette yesterday for the first time. But I just know of all of these palettes, this is going to be my most used. This is my rankings. This is catered to my preferences. So I know that this is the palette that I'm going to use the most. It's very pricey, but it's, it's so bomb. So this is the Tom Ford Eye Color Quad in the shade Metal Lust. This is from their Extreme Badass collection. This quad is hard to get a hold of. It was back ordered and then it sold out in 10 minutes once it did become available. Oh, I feel so lucky that I was able to get my hands on this. I'm a cool tone neutral fan when it comes to like my everyday most comfortable makeup, makeup that I feel the prettiest in. It's when I'm wearing a cool tone neutral look. And this is that in one of my now new favorite Tom Ford formulas. So the mattes are super buttery and smooth. They basically blend themselves out and then the shimmers here have like a glitter to them and I like glitter, okay? I like that extra little sparkle on the eyelid. I love that this formula gives that to me. So I feel like it's such an easy everyday look with a little bit of spice to it that I love. Can I stop saying that I love? Anyways, this palette is awesome. It's perfect for me. Um, if you have similar taste in makeup that I do, you like the kind of everyday makeup style that I like, quick and easy, beautiful color story, amazing formulation. This is my favorite that I tried this month even though I've only used it once. I just, I feel the confidence in it. So yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know what palettes you tried this month. Think about it, rank them, give yourself a little bit of a challenge. Thank you so much for being subscribed to this channel and liking this video because I know you did that already. And I will see you guys in the next one. I guess have a good one.